قال عليه الصلاة والسلام إذا مررتم برياض الجنة فارتعوا قالوا وما رياض الجنة قال حلق الذكر The mission of this podcast is to cultivate and nurture Muslims by fostering Islamic values rooted in the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the companions رضي الله عنهم We aim to address diverse range of issues affecting the Muslim community in a positive manner, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Amma ba'd. Welcome to Riyadh al-Uqala, Gardens of the Wise. We thank you for tuning in. عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا مررتم برياض الجنة فارتعوا قالوا وما رياض الجنة قال حلق الذكر رواه أحمد والترمذي وحسنه الألباني رحمه الله في صحيح سنة الترمذي It was narrated by Anas رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said When you pass by the gardens of the paradise then partake therein They said, and what are the gardens of the paradise? He said, the circles of remembrance, reported by Ahmed and At-Tirmidhi, and Al-Albani said it's Hassan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this podcast, Gardens of the Wise, and make it from the gardens of knowledge and remembrance, as our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. I'm your host, Abu Abd rahman Muhammad al-Maghribi, And we are excited to have joining us on our first episode this evening, Imam Abu Abdullah Khalif Abdul Samad, who's a graduate from Medina University from the Faculty of Hadith and an Imam of Masjid Tawheed. We would also like to welcome our Ustad Abu Abdul Rahman Samir, who's also a graduate from the University of Medina from the Faculty of Hadith and a Khatib and an instructor at Masjid Tawheed. May Allah preserve them. Jazakumullah khaira for joining us. Hayakumullah. How are you today? Jazakallah khairan for giving us this chance. We're doing good, alhamdulillah. Allah hafadkum. Our discussion tonight, inshallah ta'ala, is about tawheed, the oneness of Allah. And with that being said, Ustad Abu Abdul Rahman, can you explain to us what is tawheed and why is it important? Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Amma ba'id. No doubt this is a very important, a very important question, at tawheed The people of knowledge, they mentioned that at tawheed linguistically, is the master of wahada yuwahidu, tawheedan, to make something one, yani ja'aluhu wahidan, to make something one. But what is intended here is to single out Allah alone in His rights, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that which is specific to Him from his lordship and his beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection and the fact that he should be worshipped alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of knowledge, they mentioned that tawheed can be understood from two main aspects, from two main aspects, and that is from the aspect of knowledge and the aspect of application. And they call the first aspect tawheed al-ilmi, tawheed al-ilmi, the knowledge-based tawheed. And the second aspect, they refer to it as at-tawheed al-amali. At-tawheed al-amali, the application of at-tawheed. So the first aspect, the knowledge-based aspect of at-tawheed is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To have knowledge of Allah azza wa jal. To know Him by His beautiful names and His lofty attributes of perfection. And to know Him by His Lordship and by His actions, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here at-tawheed al-ilmi, The knowledge-based tawheed consists of the tawheed al-rububiyyah, the tawheed of the lordship, the oneness of the lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the tawheed al-asma'i wa sifat, the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal in his beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection. So what is intended here is to know Allah, to know him, that he is the creator, and the provider, and the sustainer, that he is alive and never dies, and that he's powerful and strong and never weak. And that he's never sleepy nor tired, and he feeds and he's not fed. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, from here we understand the second aspect, and that is that he alone is worthy of worship. That he alone is worthy of worship, and this is the second aspect known as tawheed al amali, the application of a tawheed, which is also referred to as tawheed al uluhiyah, 
the, the, the oneness of the divinity of Allah Azza wa Jal and his right to be worshipped alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum, jazakumullahu khaira. And uh, Imam Khalif, why can I just believe in Allah's lordship and that he's the creator and the owner of the universe and say I'm a Muslim? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Uh, that means somebody to believe the lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal and to say he's a Muslim. Is that sufficient to be truly believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be upon Tawheed? The answer is no. In order one is Tawheed to be sound, to be valid, to be accepted, as Akhuna Abu Abdurrahman explained it, person must believe the three aspects of Tawheed. Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Asma wa sifat or Tawheed al-Ilmi, Tawheed al-Amali. He must believe it. And as for believing the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is to believe that Allah is the creator, he is the owner, he is the controller of everyone, everything, uh, that's one of the aspects of Tawheed. And and that's actually what the idol worshippers used to affirm. As Allah means in many ayat in the Quran, did the idol worshippers, those who oppose the Messenger, those who reject to say, La ilaha illallah. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهِ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ They never accepted to say, La ilaha illallah. They say, أَجَعَلَ الْأَلِهَةَ إِلَهُ وَاحِدًا La ilaha illallah means there is no true God. Accept Allah. And they say, did he make the God is only one? إِنَّ هَذَا لَشَيْءٌ عُجَابٌ So they rejected La ilaha illallah. They rejected to worship only Allah. But with that, they affirm the Lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Means if they are asked who created the universe, who is the owner of the universe, who is the controller, the disposer of affairs, they were saying only Allah. That's the Lordship. Allah mentions subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Yunus, قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Say, means oh, the Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to them, to the idol worshippers, who provided from the heaven, from the earth. أَمَّا يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارِ Who owns the hearing and the sight. وَمَا يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتِ مِنَ الْحَيِّ Which means who gives his life cause death. وَمَا يُدَّبِّرُ الْأَمْرَ Who controlled the affairs. Allah said, فَسَيَقُولُونَ They will say, Allah. They want to mention angels. They want to mention idols. They want to mention any creation. They were saying Allah. They were not saying Hubal or Lata or Uzza or Manat. They are idols. They were saying Allah. So, when this, in this ayah, that they affirm the, the controlling and the creation and the ownership, all these three things Allah mentioned in this ayah, they were affirming for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many other ayat. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, قُلْ لِمَنِ الْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ فِيهَا إِنْ كُنْتُ تَعْلَمُونَ Say who the earth and everything in it is for. If you know it, say, Allah. They will say, that's for Allah. It's for Allah. The earth and everything in it belongs to Allah. Say, who's the Lord of the seven heaven and the great throne? In Kuntu Ta'alamun. Say, Allah. They will say, that's for Allah. Say, who is in his hand? The controlling of everything. Who protects and nobody can be protected from. It. They will say that's for Allah. So this is the Lordship. Who is the Lord of the heaven and the earth. Who is the creator. And another Allah said. Wala in wal adha la Allah. If you ask them who created the heaven and the earth. La Allah. They will say sure it's Allah. So this is the Lordship. So how is it enough to somebody to, to believe the Lordship of Allah. And to be Muslim. While that didn't make the idol worshippers, the mushrikeen, the Quraysh, that didn't make the Muslims. Allah mentioned, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in another angle, that whenever they go through hardship, difficult, they never call, they never pray to anyone but Allah. Think about that. Whether they're in an ocean, they're in a land, any hardship, they were praying to Allah alone, not to an idol, not to anybody else. Allah said, Say, who saves you from the darknesses of the sea and the, and the land, of the land and the sea? 
تدعونه تضرعا وخفيا pray to him you invoke him in a state of humbleness لئن انجانا من هذه لنكونن من الشاكرين if he save us from this we will be from those who give thanks so mean they will say in Allah so whenever they go through hardship they used to pray to Allah alone this is believing Allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala in that state even worshiping Allah azza wa jal single out Allah in worship in that in the difficult so not only they were believing the lordship of Allah but also in the difficult they were worshiping him alone so Allah said fa idha rakibu fil fulki da'u Allah mukhlisina lahu din they embark on the ship they pray to Allah single out Allah in the religion means in the praying so in the hardships in the difficult in the ocean in the land everywhere they were praying to Allah alone they were not praying to somebody else and even in the east which they used to pray someone with Allah and that's where the shirk is فلما نجاهم الى البر اذا هم مشركون والله سيف them to the land behold they make shirk even that situation they were not worshiping other than Allah because they control the universe they worship other than Allah because they get them nearer to Allah they get them closer to Allah والذين اتخذوا من دوني اولياء ما نعبدهم الا ليقربونا الى الله they say we don't pray to them except to get us nearer to Allah so why they praying to the idols why they praying to the angels why they praying to manata they were saying for one single reason to get us nearer to Allah in another line surah to yunus allah said wa ya'buduna min duni la ma la yadur wa la yanfa'u wa yaquluna ha ulai shufa'una they say these are our intercessors with Allah they make intercession for us so those people they were believing the lordship of Allah azza wa jal yet they rejected la ilaha illallah mm-hmm. they were worshiping someone with Allah to get closer to Allah mm-hmm. so it's not sufficient it's not enough someone to believe the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is the creator the owner the controller of the universe and to worship someone with Allah and to be muslim in order his tawhid the oneness of Allah to be sound he must believe the lordship of Allah Allah is the creator the owner the controller and he must believe the worship that the uluhiyah is solely for Allah he worship none but Allah he doesn't pray to Jesus he doesn't pray to prophet Muhammad he doesn't pray to the angels to Tijani to Jailani to anyone beside Allah that's Allah is qul inma ad'u rabbi wa la ushriku bi ahad so i only call my lord my lord i don't associate anyone with him in worship so also to believe the beautiful names and description of Allah mention Quran and sunnah if someone believe the lordship and he denied the uluhiyah he denied la ilaha illallah he denied the tawhid if somebody believe the tawhid the uluhiyah he say only allah deserve to be worshiped there is no true god but allah but he believe other than allah control the universe he didn't apply the tawhid if someone believe the uluhiyah he say la ilaha illallah none has right to be worshiped by allah and he affirm the 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 lordship for allah allah is the creator the only the controller but he deny one of the description description of allah He deny one of the names of Allah. He will be disbeliever by that. I the worshiper they deny the name of Allah Ar-Rahman. They accepted Allah, but they deny the name of Allah Ar-Rahman. Allah said wa hum yakfuruna bir-Rahman. Qul huwa rabbi. Qul id'u Allah aw id'u Ar-Rahman ayyama tad'u falahu al-asma'u al-husna. So to believe all the names of Allah. Likewise someone who deny Allah's description that Allah is above his throne subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has hands, Allah has face. Allah mentioned that in Quran. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in the sound sunnah so in order for someone to be upon tawhid he has to believe the tawhid of Allah azza wa jal which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in his Quran clear again believing the lordship of Allah tawhid al rububiyya and saying i am a muslim is not sufficient for someone to be uh, someone upon tawhid someone truly muslim in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wallahu alam jazakum allah khayra Barakallahu feekum. So you mentioned that disbelievers that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to affirmed the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it comes to worship, they did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sometimes they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in difficult times, but in times of ease, they would associate partners and that did not make them Muslims. Barakallahu yes. feekum. Yes. Ustad Abu Abd Rahman. So you also mentioned the three aspects of tawhid, tawhid al-rububiyyah and tawhid al-uluhiyyah and tawhid al-asma' wa sifat Can you tell us uh, where is this mentioned in uh, in the Quran barakallahu feekum? 
Allah, he says, Rabbu samawati wa ardi wa ma baynahuma fa'budhu wa stabil li ibadati. Meaning that Allah Azza wa Jal, he is the Lord and the creator of everything in the heavens and the earth. Rabbu samawati wa ardi wa ma baynahuma fa'budhu wa stabil li ibadati. So therefore you must worship him alone and be patient and persevere upon his worship. Upon his worship, هل تعلم له السمية? Do you know anyone who is similar to him? So in this one verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had mentioned all three of these aspects: the aspects of the lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned first. رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما. This is Tawhid al-Rububiya, the Lord of the heavens and the earth and everything that is between them. So the Lord is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who are رب العالمين. He is the Lord, the one who has authority and command. He is the Creator and the Provider. And the sustainer, and the one who's given everything a shape and its form, and, and the one who's given everything a shape and its form, and this is what is mentioned here, and this is the evidence and the proof for the obligation to single him out alone in all aspects of worship. So therefore, Allah Azza wa Jalla He followed it up with the statement, "Fa'abudhu wa stabil ibadati." Fa'abudhu said, "Therefore worship him." So therefore worship him alone and be patient upon his worship, and be patient upon his worship, and this is in reference to Tawheed al uluhiya and Tawheed al ibadah yeah. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. هل تعلم له السمية? Do you know anyone who is comparable or resembles him whatsoever? So this is in reference to his beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection. That no one is like him and no one is similar to him. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who has the attributes of a perfection. So this one verse clarifies these three aspects. But likewise, I mentioned previously, Barakallah Fikum, uh, another aspect of understanding the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that is that there is the knowledge based aspect and there is the application of the Tawheed. So the knowledge based aspect includes the Rububiya and the, and the Asma wa Sifat. It includes the Lordship and the, the beautiful names and lofty attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is mentioned likewise in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end of Surah Al Talaq. Allah he says, الله الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن يتنزل الأمر بينهن لتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما. يعني الله يمنشن about himself in his book سبحان الله الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن. That it is Allah, He is the one who created the seven heavens and from the earth the likes. Thereof, يتنزل الأمر بينهن, and his command descends between them. Then he mentioned the wisdom behind the creation of the heavens and the earth, the descent of his command. سبحانه وتعالى لتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير. In order for you to know that Allah has the ability to do all things, وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما, and that Allah has encompassed all things in knowledge. So this is in reference here to at Tawhid al Ilmi. The knowledge-based aspect of it, Tawheed. And this is why Allah has created the heavens and the earth in order to be known. So that's why we call him Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the universe and all things. And the Alameen is from an Alam. It's because by way of this universe and everything therein, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is known. And by learning about his Tawheed and his names and attributes and realizing his lordship and command and authority, one will love Allah Azza wa Jal. One will love him and fear him and hope for his mercy and strive to draw near to him. And this is the gateway to a tawheed al-amali, the application of a tawheed, which likewise is referred to in the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al-Dhariyat. Mm -hmm. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, he mentioned as well from the wisdom of the creation of, of the jinn and the mankind. In this verse here in Surah Al-Talaq, the wisdom of the creation of the heavens and earth is clarified. And this is for a tawheed. And as for us, Surah Al-Dhariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have not created the jinn nor the mankind except to worship me alone. Except to worship me alone. So Allah, he created the jinn and the mankind for his tawheed. And to single him out alone for all actions of worship. For all actions of worship. So therefore, the reason for the creation of the heavens and the earth is so that Allah can be known. And he'll be known by his beautiful names and his lofty attributes of perfection and to be known by his lordship, his rububiyya, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order for him to be worshipped. And that's why we were created. We're created to know him, and to love him, and to worship him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now with that being said, is it possible for someone that has knowledge, knows Arabic, and memorized Qur'an, and not understand this uh, tawheed correctly? 
Yes, that's possible. Uh, because in Sahih Muslim, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, نظر الله امرأة سمع مقالتي فوعاها وحفظها وبلغها فرب حامل فقه ليس بفقيه ورب حامل فقه إلى من هو أفقه منه كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام In this hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم make dua for the one who hears his hadith and, and convey it to the other and he mentioned there may be someone رب حامل فقه who carry a fiqh and a religion, a knowledge. He carry a knowledge, ليس بفقيه. But he is not fakih, he is not understanding. ورب حامل فقه إلى من هو أفقه منه. Someone who carry a knowledge, who is, conv- is conveying to someone who understands better than him. So in this hadith, that someone may know, may have a knowledge, but may not understand it. May not understand it. Also, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that there will be a group of people who will come after him. The Khawarij, يَقْرَؤُونَ الْقُرْآنَ لَا يُجَاوِزُ حَنَاجِرَهُمْ The recited Qur'an doesn't exceed their throat. They لَا يَفْقَهُونَهُ They don't understand it. So these, they were, uh, they were reciting Qur'an. Rather, the one who killed uh, Ali radiallahu anhu, Abdurrahman ibn Muljam, Umar radiallahu anhu made tazkiyah, recommendation for him to teach people the Qur'an. He sent him to Egypt to have him have a madrasa, school of Qur'an. So he was speaking Arabic, he memorized the Qur'an, he specialized in reciting the of Qur'an, but yet he didn't understand. He was from Khawarij. Those who the messenger Muhammad mentioned, they don't understand the Qur'an. So yes, someone who has a knowledge, who memorized Qur'an, still may not understand the knowledge he carried. And from that is the Tawheed. From that is Tawheed. And it happened, I, have, I remember two incidents. One imam, one someone come to me in, a, in Masjid Tawheed, uh, the old building, and he said he wanted me to participate a conference which is being taken one of the big masajids in the city. I asked him, who are you? He tell me he is the sheikh of that masjid. And I know that those people don't, give more concern and more importance to the Tawheed. So I sit with him, we have a conversation, and I end up asking questions. Say the, the enemy of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Mushrikeen, idol worshippers, those who fought him from Quraysh, where they believe in the existence of Allah. He said, no, they were not. If they would have believed, he said, they would have worshipped Allah. Subhan. They weren't believing Allah existed. If they would have believed, he said, they would have worshipped Allah. Azza wa Jal. That one, I do not know his level of knowledge. The only thing I know, he said he's the sheikh of that masjid. But there is somebody, another incident, I know his knowledge, very knowledgeable. I knew him before almost he was, yeah, I knew him before he was accepted by Medina University. He graduated from Medina University, the faculty of Quran. Before that, he was a great Qari. Uh, Arabic language, if it's not his first language, it's his second language. So, from Jama'at Tabligh. So, one time he gave us a lecture in the Jami'a. Uh, the students back day, I don't know, they had a system. Whoever graduated the university before them, they used to invite him if you come for Hajj or Umrah to, gi- to encourage them to uh, continue studying and to give them uh, advice. And he was invited. And he gave a talk. From what he said, that the Quraysh, the Mushrikeen at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi they were not believing that Allah existed. Mm-hmm. That shocked me. I asked him a question at the end of his talk. And then Allah said, وَلَا إِنْ سَأَلْتَ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَأَلَّا يَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ He pointed out to his mouth. He said that was just by the tongue. Mm-hmm. Meaning they didn't believe that. They were saying Allah had created the heaven and the earth, but they didn't believe that. So this Quranic reciter who graduated from Medina, before that, he specialized in Quran. And still, he didn't learn from the Quran that those mushrikeen were believing the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all the verses we mentioned a while ago. Mm-hmm. Think about one thing. Allah mentioned that when they're in the ocean, they go through hardship, they pray to him alone. Yeah. They pray to Allah alone and they make a commitment 
لئن انجيتنا من هذه لنكونن من الشاكر if you save us from this surely we'll be from those who give thanks is it possible for a human to be in a hardship while he's in hardship to call someone he doesn't believe he exists to call someone he doesn't believe he hears him yeah. to call someone he doesn't believe he can help him is impossible yeah. so with all this clarity this quranic reciter he didn't and learn he didn't understand from quran that uh, the idol worshippers were believing the existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so yes somebody my mom is quran may know may, may be even a scholar and may not understand the tawhid of allah azza wa jalla as mentioned by sheikh al-albar rahimahullah also he said that professor jamiatul azhar he said the mufti and when he leave he go he make tawaf on the grave of hussein he said he didn't understand the meaning of la ilaha illallah wallahu a'lam as muslims we may feel that we don't need to learn tawhid because we are already muslims and that there are more important issues that the umma needs to address barakallahu <laughs> yes uh, the religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, consists of tawhid ibadah worship akhlaq suluk manners all is from the religion of allah azza wa jalla Every part of it is very important. Everything that Allah sent down is very important. We have to believe the tawhid of Allah Azza wa Jal. We have to pray. We have to fast. We have to make the ibadat. And we have to abide to the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of dealings. All of it is important. But the tawhid is the most important. The tawhid is the most important. Therefore, Allah mentioned that every messenger he sent, he sent you with tawhid wama arsalna min qablika min rasul illa nuhi ilayh annahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budun every messenger prophet muhammad alayhi salatu was salam 13 years in makkah he was concentrating more about the tawhid there was alcohol was lawful at the time hijab was not a mandatory jihad was not legislated even salah the five prayers were legislated at the 10th year of the bi'tha but tawhid was from day one. First time he saw call the people he gathered them he said qulu la ilaha illa tuflihu say la ilaha to succeed not only that when he come medina could tawhid recite the quran of surah al baqarah surah al maida surah al an'am tawhid until to the death of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was suffering with the pain of the sickness and he was covering his face and then when he cannot breathe he was taken Oh, and then he was saying in that state la'an allahu al-yahuda wa an-nasara ittakhadhu qubur anbiya'ihi masajid ala fala tattakhiduha ala inni anhaakum an dhalik aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wasallam so to the end of his life alayhi salatu was salam he won against the shirk yeah. he was about to die so. and he was about to die sallallahu alayhi wasallam last minute of his life yeah. and he was warning against the shirk so the tawhid uh, calling people to the tawhid of allah azza wa jal is the foundation of the religion no action is accepted actually without la ilaha illallah يعني how many years the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been calling for tawhid before even the salat was legislated at least it, around 10 years yeah. some scholars they say the salat was legislated uh, the 10th year yeah. some they say the 6th year yeah. much more they say the 10th year the laylatul isra uh, wal miraj yeah. but the point is he sallallahu alaihi wasallam even after he migrated sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was calling to tawhid yeah. he was calling to tawhid it was uh, it was hunain when he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said qala allah azza wa jal asbaha min ibadi mu'minu bi kafiru bil kawkab wa kafiru bi mu'minu bil kawkab man qala mutirna bi fadli allah asbaha mu'minan bi kafiru bil kawkab wa man qala mutirna bi naw'i kada wa kala asbaha kafiran bi mu'minan bil kawkab so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was calling people to tawhid and when subhanallah one time some new muslims from the companion they say ya rasulullah ij'al lana dhat anwat kama lahu dhat anwat they ask it to be to be allowed to do what the mushrikeen used to do he said allahu akbar innaha sunan laqad qultu ma qala qawm musa li musa ij'al lana ilahan kama lahum aliha he he was very mad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so again tawhid is every act of worship must be upon la ilaha illa salah fasting hajj so that's the most important but that doesn't mean no teaching salah it doesn't mean no teaching fiqh it doesn't mean no teaching the religion of allah should be taken all ya ayyuhal ladina amanu udkhulu fi as-silmi kafa but the religion is more important uh, the tawhid is more important even in our worldly life 
There are things which are necessary for our life. We have to have an oxygen to survive. We have to, have, uh, we have to drink. Yeah. We have to eat. We have to have a place to live. We have to have clothes. There are necessities. But these necessities, which we all need, it, the oxygen is the most important. Some of you cannot survive in a, the shortest time. And some of you can survive maybe hours, maybe days. No. But all is important. So yes, it should be taught the fiqh, it should be taught the ibadat, all of the religion, but tawheed has to be the center of every act of worship. Therefore, Allah said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, aminu billah. Or oh, you believe, believe in Allah. Allah addressed them, called them the description of belief. And there's no belief without believing in Allah. Yet Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, aminu billah. Or oh, you believe, believe in Allah. So this ayah is a proof a Muslim should be called to the Tawheed, should be called to La ilaha illa. Rather, Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he gave a Friday lecture and a big ceremony, what he used to start with? Ya ayuhal ladhin amanu taqullah haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antu muslimun. Don't I accept while you are Muslim? That means Tawheed, be upon Tawheed. So Tawheed never be out of uh, one's life. Uh, in every act of worship must be according to Tawheed, La ilaha illa. Must be according to Muhammad Rasulullah, according to the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wallahu Alam. Jazakum Allah. Alhamdulillah. Barak Allah Fikum. Question to you, Ustad Abu Abdul Rahman. Now, in the in some of the uh, Muslim land, we see that some people um, would make tawaf around the graveyard, and in this land, we don't see that. What are some of the shirk that we see in this land? Jazakum Allah Khaira. For example, in uh, society, no doubt the, the religion of Christianity is based upon paganism no. and falsehood. We see many churches around here, and likewise we see the crosses that are posted as well. Mm -hmm. All of this is from paganism and from polytheism, and from the aspects uh, of shirk, from the aspects of a shirk. No. And, uh, and uh, even, even likewise, we see some of the, the clothing and the garments and uh, the logos that some of them wear. No. It's been mentioned that even the, the Nike was a, no. a god from the Greeks and the likes like this. No. So all of this is from the signs of, of paganism no. and polytheism. No. There, there are many aspects in, in society. From that is the, the wedding ring. No. They, many of them, they wear the wedding ring. And uh, they believe that so long as that ring is on the finger, then their relationship will be good. From that is uh, in the cereal, they have Lucky Charms, yeah. a cereal called Lucky Charms. Amen. And uh, it has uh, these different charms. And these charms are, are things that the magicians, they use, and they have belief, and yeah. they have greed in them. This is a cereal yeah. that is well known. Likewise, they have many uh, toys yeah. and games that have magic in them. Yeah and other games that have false creeds and no. beliefs and other figures and the likes like yeah. superman they have they believe that they have forces and abilities and one of them one of the figures is able to control the wind no. and send the rain and this no, is no, all no. from the lordship of allah azza wa jil. this is from his right subhana so to believe that there is an, someone else who can likewise send the rain or control the wind this is all falsehood and this is shirk in the lordship of allah azza wa jil. allah azza wa jil, he is the one who has authority and command no over the creation so these are all some of these things we have to be careful likewise in many of the video games and many of the video games they have uh they have magic in them yeah. and uh the in the, in the games one of them he has to move around he has to put a magic spell if he does a magic potion he can get this money or do a magic spell so on and so forth or even some of them they have to actually literally commit shirk yeah. any some of the video games they have them in there now they have totem poles and uh, totem totem poses from Crete, from the American Indian people, they have, uh, uh, in reality, shirk is uh, ingrained in the society in many different aspects, in many different ways. Uh, Allah al no, no. Maybe you can remind me of some of them. You know, um, some people um, uh, have some belief that if you're born in February... Ah, I was going to uh, say that. Yeah. Oh yeah, this one is the astrology, the belief in the horoscope. So all of this is yani, from the Kahana, from believing in the stars, with Tanjim. Yani, and, 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 and this is all from Shirk, and the one who 
goes to the horoscope and he reads it for example and he believes in it then his prayer will not be accepted this is an aspect of kihana an aspect of fortune telling also in the streets you will find they have fortune tellers you know you go sometimes you find the shop they will have signs they have the fortune teller you can go there palm readers and the lights like this all of this is from shirk all of this is from shirk no doubt the horoscope is from shirk likewise sometimes they go to to the to the chinese uh, restaurants or to the Japanese restaurants or the Korean restaurants, and you'll find they have Buddha there. Okay. They have they have images there, and they have candles there, and the likes like this. All of this is from Shirk. Also, some of the Chinese restaurants, likewise, you get uh, a fortune cookie. You get a fortune cookie. You get a cookie, and you bust it open, and you read it, and this is your fortune. And this is Kihana, claiming that they know the unseen. So the one who, even he goes to that and just checks it out, he's like the one who's going to the Kahan. So his prayer will not be accepted for 40 days. The one who believes in it, or he's affected by that, then this is something that's going to uh, to wipe out the tawheed from his foundation if he's not careful. This is very dangerous. So some people, they take these things lightly. Like these uh, superheroes, sometimes they're on shirts or they're on clothing or they're on toys and the likes like this. And they believe that they have superpowers. Any powers that uh, or abilities that only Allah has the ability to perform or to do. So all of this is from the aspects of shirk that are found in society who harry harry potter for example he's a magician performing magic and and, and, and that is shirki and we know magic doesn't happen except by worshiping the jinn and submitting to the jinn and the lights like this so, so in reality there are many aspects of how shirk yeah. is ingrained in the society halloween is a day of shirk and christmas is a day of shirk and easter is all about shirk yeah, with the other billah speaking hey, of that valentine's day valentine's day the same coming. valentine's this hey, nah. same valentine's he was, uh, is the wali of the christians <laughs> the billah. Billah. and they ha and they have false creed and belief with with regards to that likewise oh, it's very important to learn the tawhid yeah. and to learn the proper creed alhamdulillah we have two we have two days yeah. Uh, we have we have two days in the year and one day in the, in the week. Okay. Two days in the year and one day a week. Alhamdulillah, that's yeah. sufficient for us. Barakallahu yeah. fikum. Also, there's the the clovers, uh, the lucky charm. That those that's from the lucky charms. The clovers that they have. That's on Saint Patrick's Day. Mm. On Saint Patrick's Day, and they have the clovers, and they believe that these are lucky. If it's four leaf, the forty leaf clover, they believe that it will bring them luck, and bring them goodness. And others, they have, uh, they keep on their on their keychains. They have a rabbit's foot. They have a rabbit's foot, and they believe that it's a lucky charm. And this goes back to those that cereal I was talking about, the lucky charms. And so from them is the clover, and and uh, other than the, the rainbow, and the likes like this. All of this is from uh, from the madahir shirk. Allah musta'ah. Abu Abdul Rahman, uh, such such was done by Mother Nature, by Mother Nature. That also. Uh -huh, all of this, yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is something to be careful and cautious from. And shirk will uh, statements. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mother Nature. Yeah, or this was a natural disaster, mm -hmm. claiming that this was a natural disaster, or this is Mother Nature, or, or the likes like this, or had it not been for such and such. I know that in some of the, some of the homeschool material, some of the homeschool material, they have this atheism likewise ingrained, in there. Some of the books that I've seen, it will have a, a lesson for the child, and they will have pictures of things in creation like the trees, and the sun, and, and the animals, and then I'll have other things that are like created by men, houses, and cars, and the likes like this, and the assignment is that you have to write the names of all of the things created by man on this side, and all the things created by Mother Nature on this side. All the things created by Mother Nature on this side. So. If one is not aware, they're just going to go for it and do like this. But in reality, they're ingraining the disbelief and shirk in the heart of the child atheism to not believe in the creator, that Mother Nature is the creator and not Allah. So this is shirk and disbelief for the other billah. So this is all sin. Rahman, I'll come back to you again. Jazakallah khair. Can you explain your journey to Tawheed and accepting Islam? You know, this... Gathering may not be yani, <laughs> sufficient for you, but inshallah. I said, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdul but, but to summarize, my family, they are not religious. So okay. I grew up in a society and I was never taken to church or forced to believe a particular belief. So you can say I was on the fitrah. 
Mm-hmm. So I used to always believe uh, in God mm-hmm. and the Creator, and uh, I used to always likewise research and read different different uh, religious materials from different religions and different ideologies and likes like this. But uh, mm-hmm. so I would read. I had my own thoughts about religion, and I believed in the Creator. I also used to believe in Jesus, but I believed He was a prophet. And I believed in the Bible, but I believed it was corrupted. So I, I had this this basic belief like this. And then finally, uh, finally, whenever I was in my early 20s, I met a Muslim. I met this person you know, for the first time. He asked me, you know, what is my religion? He said, are you a Christian? I said, no, I'm not a Christian. He said, are you this? Are you that? I said, no. He said, what do you believe? So I told him, I believe in God. I believe in the Creator. And uh, he said, "Do you believe in Jesus?" I was like, "Yeah, but I, I don't think he's a I don't think he's God, or the Son of God." Yeah. So then he said, well, "The Bible." I said, "I believe in the Bible, but I I think that it's corrupted. I think that it's corrupted now." Wow. So he said to me, "He said you sound like you're a Muslim." <laughs> so I said, "What's that? What's a, what's a Muslim?" So he started telling me a little bit about Islam, and he told me about the pillars of Islam, and I was amazed. So immediately. I was. I, I said, that's what I believe. So I was amazed the very first time how he told me that we believe in the Creator, we believe in prophets, we believe in revelation, we believe in angels, we believe in the last day. I already believe in all these things. So for somebody to mention to me that there's an organized religion that had all these beliefs that was already there in this religion that I already believed in, it was so easy for to me accept to to accept. So immediately, I uh, I accepted Islam, and initially in my heart at that time but it wasn't for some time after that before I actually implemented Islam and there was a actual s- several years before uh, I began to follow the religion but that was the first time yeah. uh, when I heard about it I believed in it automatically Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah but I continued on my way before and didn't change anything in my life until some things happened and then Allah guided me to submit and to start praying Alhamdulillah. and after that Alhamdulillah my life became uh, much better and I've been seeking knowledge ever since Alhamdulillah Imam Khalif Jazakallah Khair what was your journey with Tawheed growing up in a Muslim land? Alhamdulillah I was young and I grew up in an environment that everyone was practicing Sufism Sufia um, but not into the same level. Some of them really were more close to the Tawheed, to following the Sunnah, than the other. And specifically the group my parents belonged to is a group called Ahmadiyya. Yeah. Uh, I remember from the books we used to read when we gather for the celebration of the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam book called Majmu'u Sharaf al Anan. Until now I have that book. And I'm surprised when I see what's, what's in that book we used to read. Subhanallah. From those, what they say in that book, uh, in the book there is Mahalul Qiyam where to be stand because they believe the Messenger Sallallahu is coming in that gathering alayhi salatu wasalam with the four khulafa of Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali uh, also Angel Jibril, uh, Mikail also the four imams uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ibn Hanbal Khadr also uh, you can review a book called Jawahir al-Nafis fi Khawas Sheikh Awais in detail but this one Majmu'u Salaf al-Anam Mahalu al-Qiyam and that they are talking to the Messenger Sallallahu From the statement they used to, they say, until now they practice it, those who remain on that path. Uh, they say, Anta lil rusuli khitamu, Anta lil mawla shakuru, Abdu kal miskinu yarju, Fadla kal jamma al ghafira, Fika qad ahsantu dhanni, Ya bashiru ya nadiru, Ya ghayathi ya maladi, Fi mulimmati al umuri, فَأَغِثْنِي وَأَجِرْنِي يَا مُجِيرُ مِنَ السَّعِيرِ so They basically here pray They're to the messenger the prophet, so. addressing the messenger. أَنْتَ لِلْرُسُلِ خِتَامِ You are the seal of the messengers. Yeah. That's the messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. أَنْتَ لِلْمَوْلَى شَكُورِ You're the one who gives thanks to Allah, yeah. to the Mawla. 
عبدك المسكين يرجو your your poor slave hope your poor slave hope فضلك الجم الغفير your great bountings favor they address him the messenger فيك قد احسنت ظن it is you who i i i put my trust in i have hope in him يا بشير يا نذير oh, the one who give grave tidings the one who won they mean the messenger sallallahu then they continue praying asking him until they say يا مجير من السعير فاغثني aid me واجرني and save me يا مجير من السعير the one who save from the sa'ir in the same book they have this famous poem called قصيدة البردة uh, which many messages are uh, the people they until now practice in everywhere even here in Stone Mountain some of the messages they practice they read when they are uh, gathered for the celebration of the birthday of the Prophet Sallam uh, on Thursdays, Fridays or the 12th of Rabi'u al-Awwal from that يا أكرم الخلق ما لي من ألود به سواك عند حلول حادث العمم فإن من جودك الدنيا وضرتها ومن علومك علم اللوح والقلم so basically to summarize they say to the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم it is he who gives the worldly life and the hereafter so people were practicing those things a lot of uh, praying to the dead some of them when, when they lost the sheep when they lost the animal there is a sheikh Somali sheikh they call him when they when they go through hardship there is another one they call him when they miss something there is another one they call him and the tribe next to they have another one to call him so many ones a lot of people to call them to pray they call awliya saints to call them other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and alhamdulillah there were people of Tawheed, but very few being given bad name. They were Habiya, they Mubtadi'a, they changed their religion. I remember one of my beloved parents, he won against me, avoid that man who is called such and such. And I used to avoid that man. I used to avoid him. Until one night, I was in a masjid, and I was informed that someone is giving a talk in a, in a Quranic school, a madrasa, close to the masjid. I went between Maghrib and Isha. This person he talked about the importance of Salah. I remember the Isha prayer, I was crying how his lecture affected me. Later they tell me this person, he is so and so, is the same one they used to warn against. The same one they used to warn against. I said, SubhanAllah, I miss this person all these years. And then I started, Alhamdulillah. So long journey, I'm here now. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair for sharing. Barakallahu feekum. And what is the emphasis the people of knowledge put on Tawheed that you may have witnessed while, uh, you know, sitting with the scholars? Jazakumullah khair. Tayyib, bismillah. Inshallah, before Abu Abdurrahman, if I hasten to. Yes, the people of knowledge, they emphasize the Tawheed. I mentioned one thing I... I attended with Sheikh Uthaymin, rahimahullah. But before that, uh, as Akhuna Abu Abdurrahman mentioned, the three aspects of Tawheed, and the ulama, they wrote books on each of those three aspects of Tawheed. For instance, Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, you have Kitab al-Tawheed, wa Ithbat al-Sifat al-Rabbi Azza wa Jal, al-Ibam ibn Khuzayma, from the great, Muhaddithin, great scholars from Aima Shafi'iya, who was living in the first three generations, Rahimahullah. Uh, also, as for Tawheed al Uluhiya, Tawheed al Ibadah, you have the book of Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, Rahimahullah, that beloved Sheikh, Rahimahullah, who has many beautiful books, Fadl al Islam, Alhamdulillah, Usul al Thalatha, Qawa'id al Arba, Usul al Sitta. From those books, Kitab al Tawheed, الذي هو حق الله على العبيد. That's about توحيد الولية. And you have other scholars who have books about توحيد الربوبية like شيخ سعد رحمه الله تعالى. This is how the علماء they, 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 they give importance to the توحيد. As for the incident with شيخ عثيمين رحمه الله uh, الحمد لله all praise be to Allah that I was there uh, in the Hajj in Masjid Al-Khayf in Mina. شيخ عثيمين between Maghrib and he was giving a talk. I was so close to us, the way I'm close to you, there was only one line before me. And Rahimahullah, and he was talking about Tawheed. 
and I was really tired. I think I slept or about to sleep or I was awake but my mind was not there until I see the Sheikh screaming, raising his hand, say, oh my Lord, don't cause me to die while I don't believe you being above your throne. I never forget that incident. Wallahi al-Azim. The Sheikh make dua and he scream and raise his hand. Oh Allah, oh my Lord, ya Allah, don't make me die without you, without me believing that you are above your throne. So this shows how Sheikh uh, Rahimahullah was given important how he, we ask Allah Karim to give us good ending. Abu Abdul Rahman, please, Barakallah, thank you. He has anything else to add? I remember one time uh, they were walking with uh, Sheikh Muhammad and the students were asking questions. Sheikh Muhammad who? Sheikh Muhammad ibn Hadi. Hafidahullah. Sheikh Muhammad ibn Hadi al-Madkhal. The students were asking questions. They were asking some, uh, some questions about touchy subjects. So one of the students uh, suggested for the sheikh to not answer the question. <coughs> and uh, he said, you know, this is a very, this is a touchy subject. You know, don't come asking like, like these questions right here. Maybe the sheikh is going to yeah. get, you want to get, in, 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 he's going to get in trouble. Yeah. And the sheikh, he became furious. And he said, uh, he said, wallahi, I'm not afraid of anyone except for Allah. Allahu Akbar. I swear by Allah, if bullets were falling from the sky, it would only hit the head that it's written for. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid of anyone except for Allah. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> so he, he, just to clarify, Yanni, that the, the, the command is in the hands of Allah, and the decree is the decree of Allah. And you fear only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the creation of Allah. Mm-hmm. So this is what he, uh, this is what he's mentioning, and, and in this story goes on, but this is the benefit of that. The <laughs> likes of, of his statement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. We don't fear a, 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 anyone from, from the people. Um, SubhanAllah, nowadays social media is all over. So uh, what effects can social media have on one's tawheed? Social media can uh, completely confuse and mislead a person. It could very easily cause uh, a person's tawheed to go away entirely yani if, if one is not careful or it can bring great deficiency. Or on the other hand, likewise, a person, if he's wise and he's given success, he can even benefit from it. Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, our Shaykh, used to say, uh, ta'ala, that in these uh, devices that we have today, these devices and the internet, that there is fihi khayrun kathir wa fihi sharrun akthar. That there's a lot of good, but the evil is more. The evil is more. So if a person, he, he fears Allah Azza wa Jal, and he strives to use those devices and these means in the social media and that which is lawful and beneficial. Many of you has fiqh in the deen with regards to using these devices and, and the social media, then he can benefit and benefit others. Then he can benefit and benefit others. But if he's not careful, then indeed he can be led astray because there are so many doubts and misconceptions any that are being presented on the social media with regards to Islam from the Muslims and from the non-Muslims. From the Muslims and from the non-Muslims, and everyone is coming up, trying to uh, say his opinion or to to put push his issue or to uh, suggest his suggestions and the likes like this, and all of them are given a platform, so it's all mixed up. Yeah. So it's all mixed up. So a person has to really uh, be diligent and be careful and be cautious where they take knowledge from, yeah. and uh, even if it's not from the aspect of the doubts and misconceptions, likewise there's so many desires and whims and impermissible lust mm-hmm. that are and temptations that are wide open yani, uh, on these avenues of social media that can also have a great effect on a person's tawheed because the tawheed is affected by these doubts and misconceptions, no doubt, by innovations and misunderstandings in the creed and in the belief. And likewise, the tawheed is affected by, by the sins and by the actions of disobedience, by looking at that which is impermissible in haram and listening to that which is impermissible in haram and by having conversations yeah. and communicating yeah. with uh, individuals that it's not allowed to communicate with. And right. these things lead to that which is greater than that and it has a direct effect on the heart. Yeah. So this is something that a person, he has to be diligent with regards to protecting the tawheed. Barakallah. Yeah. Imam Kharif, speaking of the uh, effects of social media on tawheed, what is a uh, what is an advice that you want to give to the youth? Jazakumullah khaira. Yeah, Allah yahfadak. First of all, as Akuna Abu Abdurrahman hafidahullah mentioned, 
the social media has a, a big effect on what is Tawheed negatively. If he doesn't use it in a, in a good way, it's not, be careful. And, and we know in the social media, the two things which cause someone to deviate from his religion is there. Yeah. Whether it is the shubha, the doubts, or whether it is the shahwa, the lusts and whims and the evil desires, is there in the social media. And you may not open, you, you don't open, but you may find those. So, and no doubt that uh, uh, this thing is affecting when it's Tawheed. How? We know uh, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ mentioned when somebody commit a sin, إِذَا أَذْنَبَ الْمُؤْمِنُ ذَنْبًا نُكِتَ فِي قَلْبِ نُكْتَةٌ سَوْدَى When a believer, he commit a sin, a black dot will be placed on his heart. فَإِذَا تَابَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ سَقَلَ مِنْهَا If he repents, فَإِذَا تَابَ وَنَزَعَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ If he repents and he stops, means the sin, and he asks Allah forgiveness, means he repents from it, سَقَلَ مِنْهَا He becomes pure from it. وَإِنْ زَادَ زَادَتْ And if he increases the sin, it increases. حَتَّى يُغَلَّفَ بِهَا قَلْبُ Until it covers his heart. His heart is covered with that sin. وَذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى And that's what Allah mentioned. كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَ عَلَى قُلُوبِ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Nay, what covered their heart is what they used to earn. So this ayah is about the kuffar in Surah Mutafifin. كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَ عَلَى قُلُوبِ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ It's the disbelievers. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that hadith that a believer may end up to disbelief. May end up disbeliever by committing a sin. So in this social media, there is sin there. There is doubts, which is the most dangerous one. Kuffar, the atheists, the idol worshippers, uh, innovators, uh, the khawarij, everyone is spreading what he is upon a falsehood. No, it's a platform for that. Yes, platform for all those things. So even if somebody uh, doesn't fall into any of those traps, then evil desires and lusts and purification of the sin is out there. And all those things affect one's heart. And if the person is not diligent, is not careful, and he continue watching, reading, listening, he may end up lose his religion. And wallahu a'lam, maybe. That's why today there are a lot of people who left the Tawheed, who have doubt even about the Lordship of Allah. They become atheists. A lot of youth. Why? Because of the sin. Because of the sin. So no doubt that this affects you when it's Tawheed in a negative way, as it can affect in a, in a good way. If he learned the Tawheed, uh, he, he joined the classes of knowledge, uh, the people of Tawheed, their classes, uh, especially the scholars and those who on their way. So I believe her to be very careful. A lot of people lost their modest. They lost their religion. They lost their Tawheed. They lost their Islam because of this social media. Yeah. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of those. Jazakumullah khair. Ustaz Abu Abdul Rahman, if someone wants to correct and learn the Tawheed correctly, what is an advice or what is the correct path for them to, to follow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, فَاسَلُوا أَحْلِ ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ that you have to ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. And so to learn the Tawheed is an obligation. Rather, it's the greatest obligation and the first obligation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا الله. That you must know, meaning you must learn and know with certainty that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. And if someone does not know the virtue of Tawheed, how can he... Uh, he, he, has to learn to, he has to know the virtue To know the virtue no. know, to, to know the, 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 the requirement The yeah. obligation And know likewise the responsibility And That's the right. outcome And that which he's facing yeah. But uh, to answer the question He has to seek that knowledge From the people of knowledge He has to go to those who know Go to the scholars Or go to the, to the students of knowledge Who are well known To sit in the gatherings And to learn and to ask that which he does not know, and to strive to benefit. You need to be in the company 
uh, of, uh, of the people of knowledge and, and the students of knowledge in order to learn from them and to benefit from them. And so going back to the issue of the social media, one thing he will not do is suffice with YouTube and searching on social media and thinking that he's going to learn to hate in this manner. As has proceeded, there are some good aspects of the social media and one to definitely benefit, alhamdulillah, but especially a, a new student who's trying to learn, then he needs to have a teacher. He needs to have a teacher. He needs to go to the people of knowledge, to the students of knowledge, and to establish a relationship with them. They will help them and cultivate them and teach them and likewise direct them to those beneficial websites or those beneficial links that they can use as well on social media because a person can easily be misled, especially in the beginning, whenever he's repenting and hoping to go straight and he's desiring and has much eagerness to learn, then he could easily be misled if he does not uh, have the proper understanding or if he's not guided to the, to the right people. So it's very important to have a teacher uh, from the people of the Sunnah, yeah. someone who's known for their proper creed and belief and methodology, and likewise their noble manners. Yeah. Allah Alam. Jazakumullah khair. Are there any books that you can recommend? Books? Nah, to learn. To in learn. English? Nah. Books in English, no doubt. The, the, the book that one could uh, benefit first and foremost from is the the Adurus Muhimma, the Amat al Ummah, by Sheikh Ibn Baz, Rahimahullah. Important lessons for every Muslim with the explanation of Sheikh Abdul Razak. So this is one of the best and most beneficial books that uh, a new Muslim or an old Muslim who's repenting or wants to learn, someone who is uh, desiring to learn the religion and they want to read something beneficial, they can begin studying and reading this by themselves and any questions they have, they can ask the students of knowledge or the people of knowledge and the likes like this. But this is definitely a very beneficial book to begin with. And, and to read uh, by oneself or with one's family or even in the masjid with the brothers and the likes like this. Naam, jazakumullahu khairan for taking time out of your day to join us. May Allah reward you both tremendously and the listeners. By the way, Imam Kharif, can you tell us about Masjid Tawheed and what services, classes it provides for the community? As for the class of the masjid, alhamdulillah, there are a lot of classes in the masjid. Uh, I think it's better to go to the platform of the masjid, the telegram of the masjid. But uh, there are, alhamdulillah, uh, class between Maghrib and Isha every day. Only the eight days is the one we take off. Uh, usually, uh, every day between Maghrib and Isha, there are classes, class about the, about the fiqh, class about sirah, class about hadith, class about tafsir, class about aqidah, class about uh, Zuhud, different classes. Also, there are Arabic classes. Uh, Alhamdulillah, very good, uh, beneficial class. Akhuna uh, Abu Rahman Samiri give a lot of effort. Somebody can yeah. join from far. Alhamdulillah, uh, there are class of Quran. There is weekend Quranic class for the kids. Uh, in the Saturday, Sunday, in the morning, in the evening, there is full time Quranic class for four days, Monday through Thursday. Uh, there are other classes in the masjid, class in, uh, for the women, class for the children, class for the men, class for the youth. Uh, Alhamdulillah, being like Ta'ala, the one who has, inshallah, good heart and seeking knowledge, uh, is really good opportunity for them. Wallahi alhamdulillah, wallahu a'lam. Alhamdulillah, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we were able to uh, discuss, alhamdulillah, during this podcast, the importance of Tawheed, uh, both Jazakumullahu Khaira have explained the Tawheed, uh, showed us its importance, its virtues, the fruits of it, Alhamdulillah. Uh, we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make this gathering beneficial for all of us. Barakallahu Fikum. See you inshallah ta'ala in the next sitting of the Gardens of the Wise. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa tuwilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.